Last week at Four Golf, I picked up a real interesting iron that, uh, well, I only had a few balls with it. I thought it was really interesting. And I reckon it could appeal to a lot of average golfers, you know. So we're going to give it a proper and thorough test this morning. That's not a bad shot, I've just hit there. And it sounded quite good as well. But if you're looking for blades, if you're looking for players' distance irons, if you're looking for finesse, if you're looking for sound and feel, if you're looking for all those things, then maybe this won't be the iron for you. But if you're looking for maximum forgiveness and playability and making the game of golf a little bit easier, then it could be for you. Right, the iron we're about to look at this morning definitely falls into the game improvement iron category. In fact, it probably falls into the super game improvement iron category, whatever that means. But generally speaking, what we consider those irons to be is a little bit bulky, but they give a lot of forgiveness. They launch the ball very high. They make the game a little bit easier. They also come with some pretty strong lofts, which can impact negatively on spin. And sometimes there's a bit of a variable in terms of how that ball comes off the club face. They're the kind of things we're going to test and find out if that's true of this iron from Cobra. So I mentioned I first tried this iron last week and uh, I'd not seen it before. It's the uh, Cobra LTD X range. It's again, like I said, got all that kind of bulky top line. I quite like what they've done uh, at the back end of it in terms of shelf appeal, but I'll let you be the judge of that. And again, different colouring on the bottom of the sole suggests sort of um, visually a little trick on the eye in terms of quite how wide that sole is. But I really like what they've done in terms of from a, a visual perspective. But what I did was literally pick the ball up, uh, pick the club up before I left last week and just hit a few balls. Um, and it was one of those irons that I often refer to that's very, very easy to get that ball up and out there. So it was a case of, like I said, a few easy swings, no great effort required, let the club do all the work. But I've collected data this morning, and whilst all those things are true, there are also some negatives that you need to know about. So before we get to those negatives, let's just look at the positives, and they very much are positive numbers. Two standout numbers for me, really. Look at the carry distance. First of all, yes, uh, the kind of that top end of almost 165 carry is impressive with a so-called seven iron, but don't forget that's relative to loft. But the thing I like about the carry distance is the consistency of it. It's relatively tight, again, for this kind of iron. But then when you switch over to the spin number, that's the bit that's really, really impressive. One of the things that's obviously criticized is this a strong lofted iron, arguably a five iron in terms of traditional lofts. So to be getting a 5,000, an average rather, of above 5,000 revs of spin, that's a really impressive number. And again, I reference for this type of club, but there are negatives, I'm afraid. You see, one issue I have, a major issue, and a surprise, I suppose, again, I keep referring to this type of iron. I said in the intro, you're looking for something that launches the ball easily. And generally, that means launching the ball high, particularly for slower swing speeds, which is generally what this club is aimed at. But it doesn't. It launches the ball actually particularly low. And that surprised me a great deal. I've tried a few different shafts as well to see if we get any variations in sort of my launch conditions, but it doesn't alter that much. And some occasions you can see from the spread of numbers, it's actually quite low indeed. And that would worry me. Now on a windy day like today on a Lynx course in the UK, superb. But don't forget, this iron is designed to help people. And one of those considerations, like I said, is slow swing speed, struggle with launch. And what I'm seeing, it doesn't quite do that. And that then impacts on land angle. And once again, it's coming in a little flat. So even, it, even with that impressive spin number, that low launch, uh, low land angle is really working against each other and suggests there may be a bit of a problem in terms of stopping this type of iron on the green. Now, the one thing I've got to give major credit to Cobra for is just how good these irons sound and feel. It's become a regular topic. I always mention it because it's a big deal to me. A lot of people say it doesn't matter what a club sounds like, but uh, like I said, I can only view it from my own perspective and it's a big deal, like I say, and they've done an incredible job. I always say again that kind of like the marketing stories about the magic that's inside these clubs are often that. 
a marketing story. Some people believe them, some people do not and actually dislike them. Mine is all about the proof is in the pudding and uh, in this instance, whatever they've done, whatever they've done in terms of the manufacturing process, they've done an incredibly good job. It's very soft in its feel. I've tested a couple of irons of late that have managed to do this, so they're cast irons, but they feel incredible and sound really good. So a massive thumbs up for me. And I've got to say, I mentioned briefly about the looks. It looks a really good iron as well. So yeah, massive thumbs up to Cobra on that level. Right, back inside to look at the numbers and uh, I've just done my sort of first checks into what these clubs are in terms of the makeup. And the first thing I said was, oh my God, 26 and a half degrees. That was a bit of a shock. When I said they'd be strong lofted earlier on, that wasn't an assumption. It'd be between 28 and 29 was the idea that I had. So certainly that 26 and a half degrees explains that low launch angle. And it doesn't really compensate in terms of a carry distance because at 26 and a half degrees, I'd be expecting the ball to carry a lot further. So that's come as a bit of a shock, to be honest with you. However, it doesn't deter from the fact that thing I said earlier about the spin number being really, really good. Spinning an average of 5,000 is a full set of numbers in front of you now. Spinning at over 5,000 revs for a club at 26 and a half degrees is ridiculously good. The other thing I found out, and again, you could argue that this is poor planning on my part and that we didn't do enough research into the club before I test it, but I would argue that I like to test the club out on its own merits and then find out what it's supposed to have done. Has it done what I found, if you like? And the other interesting thing is that it's a forged uh, milled CNC face on these irons. So again, I'm never convinced that a sort of forged face in an iron in terms of inside in a cast head often feels like a forged face, but in this instance, it did, like I said. So that's two major, major positives. And my overall thing about these irons is that I was really impressed. I really liked them on the way they looked, on the way they performed, how the sort of ease of use. You'll see again, I said how far it went, 166 on average carry, um, club head speed of 78.5. So again, it's doing okay, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that, but maybe again from that sort of loft, you'd expect just that little bit further in terms of a carry distance. The other big positive is the price point. Cobra always seems to do well in terms of their positioning on price. These are coming in around 110, 115 per iron in UK pounds. So again, big ticks. Like I said, it's hard to be negative, but there clearly are, if you're looking to get custom fit, my only issue would be, and don't forget, this is me, my numbers, so you might go and try these things and find out totally different. But if I went into a fitting room and I came out with those kind of numbers, particularly the launch, 16 and a half degrees, don't forget my sort of regular sort of seven iron, even the sort of player's distance irons, which would be a sort of 30 degree seven iron, they're sort of launching a ball around 20 degrees, so a lot, lot flatter ball flight. And just so we've got that number, the last one I'll give you, if I can see it there, yeah, land angle of 43.2 and with a seven iron in hand, that again is a little bit flat for me. So lots of positives coupled with a few negatives and it really depends on what you find when you try them. And that's, again, that's the all important message, isn't it? You give them a go, see if your numbers reflect mine or maybe they're totally different. Anyway, short and sweet as ever with the club review, we try and get to the point very, very quickly, report my findings. Hopefully we've done that, point you in the right direction. That's it. Thank you for watching. Give me your feedback. You might have tried these yourself already. They're certainly in the stores to try. So let me know what you have thought. Is there anything that you have found that are in my numbers that you also found or maybe totally different? Either way, let me know and I'll see you all soon.